Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 611, 611 that is, and the topic today is, um, if you're still, if you're hurting, or if you're still hurting, you shouldn't be dating, you should be healing, lots of shoulds in there, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um, before, I choose my, before I do that, let me choose myself so you know I am, and I'm looking at that plant doing its, excuse me, and it, <laughs> it was sticking in my head, it looked weird, it looked weird. anyway. Um, <laughs> My name, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspired these talks I've done every day now for over two years, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic was inspired by a couple of posts by friends, um, the one in the title and then the one I'm going to share with you, which will underline what I'm going to hopefully inform you of. Hi Della, nice to see you again. Thank for the thanks for the post this morning that inspired this talk. In case you didn't realize that, so again, this is episode number six hundred eleven, six one one, six six eleven, and the topic today is: if you're hurting, you shouldn't be dating; you should be healing. And I'll add one more thing to that, which is another quote, or which is the meme that a friend of mine posted, which is: you can go to the gym, you can take your vitamins, you eat the right food, but if you aren't dealing with the shit inside, you're still going to get sick. So that is basically a blunt way of saying the other thing too. Because the challenge most people face, no, it's the wrong way of saying it. The presumption people face, <laughs> or the assumption people make, and it's an assumption more than a presumption, that if they just move on to the next thing, they'll be fine. And that is an extremely, um, what's we're looking for, um, inaccurate approach. I was going to say error in approach. It's just an inaccurate approach, because that's what it is. Because most people don't know this, which is why I'm sharing this with you now, in case you didn't know this already. And maybe you know some people who need to know this, you can share it with them. In case you're wondering, by the way, this is a Facebook Live I'm doing it right now that will be on YouTube later on, so you can share for me the platform. Um, except with the Facebook Live, you can interact directly with me in the comments I'll see and respond to. And I will respond to the comments on YouTube after as well. I'll give you all those links at the back end. So, the error and approach that people have, not you of course, but people you know, is that they want to get into the next relationship to make themselves feel better. In fact, what's happening for a lot of people, again, maybe not you, but maybe some people you know, after a bad breakup, where they're really feeling heart rendered and hurt and wounded, they'll wait for a period of time, and it may be a few days, it may be a few weeks, but until they feel numb enough, and its key is not heal, but numb enough, which is a very different thing from healing, before they go out with somebody else. And in fact, they'll fall in love with somebody else as a desire to feel better and to feel whole. Now, the error and approach with this is as if you're doing, hi Carrie, nice to see you my broadcast, sir, good to see you here. The error and approach people have is that they think that if they get into the next relationship, they'll feel better. But it's basically the same as painting over rust. And I've used that analogy before, by the way. And if you've ever um, painted a car or a, or a bicycle or something like that where there was rust on it, you painted over the top of it, unless you use rust oleum, which is a sealing paint, sealant paint rather, the rust is going to burst through again. The same thing is true in your relationships, meaning that if you don't heal the, let's say the crap, the pain and wounds from the past relationship that you had a traumatic experience from, the new relationship is just going to simply bring it forward again. And in fact, this new relationship won't protect it or even suppress it. And you may find yourself feeling more resentful and pain and pain filled in your next relationship because it's rubbing on the same wound. And that's a trap. Because if you're not dealing with an issue from before, if you're not dealing with a baggage from before, you'll be in a place where your wounding is going to upset everything in your life. So I said before, the other thing I talked about was, again, if you're going to the gym, you're eating the right foods, you're dealing with the vitamins, if you aren't dealing with the, as I said, shit inside, you're going to get sick. And that sickness is going to be the wounding, the emotional wounding that doesn't get healed by simply ignoring it. We are amazingly resilient beings, human beings. And in all parts of our life, things happen, not just in a relationship. Carrie, I know yeah, you've been there before. I, I think we talked about that a, bit, a while ago. So I understand. I've been, I've been there before myself. And I learned the hard way as well that when I go from relationship to relationship without dealing with the wounding and the emotional hurt that's inside, it doesn't take long for it to surface in the next relationship. And then my next relationship partner becomes the, um, the unwitting accomplice in unearthing my wounds. And that isn't what they want to sign up for. It's not what I signed them up for either. So my passion, 
Well, Car- Carrie and I are friends. He knows his stuff too. <laughs> so thank you, Della, for remind- for letting him know. <laughs> you t- I know both you guys uh, people. Um, get back on track. Rewind a second. Okay. <laughs> I have to put this back in sync. So the best thing you can do if you've come through a bad, traumatic, painful experience in a relationship, usually a relationship is where I use the language, but the truth is it could have happened in a family dynamic or a, or a traumatic experience at work even. Um. <laughs> okay, you two, stop messing around with each other. Stay, stay, on, stay tuned, please. Um. <laughs> this is fun watching you two dialogue on my screen. Um, I'm not going to share that with the rest of the people who are watching on maybe on YouTube because it was a private conversation that they're even though it's public on my Facebook Live. All right, back on track. Again, if you are surviving, because that's the thing, if you survived a traumatic experience in a relationship, a painful experience, a bad breakup, um, a traumatic wounding from your bad partnership, whatever that was, there is absolutely um, an opportunity available to heal it, but the right way is, is the intention. Because again, if you go from relationship to relationship, go out dating with somebody else, all you're doing is hiding from it. And I mentioned also that the best you can expect is to numb it out. You won't actually heal it. It doesn't go away on its own. Again, we're resilient beings. However, emotional trauma does not usually, usually, because it does it once in a blue moon, but it does not usually transform and heal itself without some interaction, some intervention, some um, healing approach, pretty simply as that. I know too many people, in fact, who do drag themselves wounded, wounded from the past, a past relationship, and the next week I see they're dating somebody else. And I would like to go up to them and shake my shoulders, which I wouldn't do because it's not my approach, and say, you don't get it. You're just going to be in more pain and suffering quicker. Because the other part of this is, when your heart's been wounded, you come out of a relationship and then you get numb because you've not done anything with it, but you just simply don't do anything about that triggering event. And so after a period of time, you feel okay again. It's kind of like you feel like you're okay even until you move again. It's like, and I'll use another analogy. If you end up, bru- this, this doesn't quite, no, that doesn't work. Okay, it does work. All right, another analogy. I'm just going to throw ones out and see if they work, if they land. Say, for example, you broke your leg. When you lie down, maybe that leg doesn't hurt so much. But you try getting up again, it's going to hurt like hell until you get it fixed. And in heartbreak and heart wounding, if you don't do anything about it after you break up, it will not go away. Again, it may go numb, but it won't go away. And the challenge, should, no, it's not the wrong word to use. The ignorance <laughs> people are under is that because they don't feel it, it's gone away. The problem's going to be when they get into a new relationship and they fall in love with somebody, that love creates intimacy. That love creates a closeness. That love brings your heart closer to the other person. And if you haven't resolved the pain and wounding inside in your heart, that person, that new lover's proximity to your heart, that intimacy you have together, will simply be like sandpaper rubbing on it, hurting like hell. And it's not their fault. They did not hurt you. But your past relationship is where the wounding still is still being carried over from. So if you, if you think about it from this perspective, would you rather be in a new relationship where you have clean slate and you can be whole and complete and be addressing this new relationship from a very healthy excited, confident, and whole place inside, a healed heart place. Or do you just want to get some in, 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 in the same bed with somebody, in love with somebody who basically, you have to be on tenter, you have to be on um, tenter hooks, that's the word, on tiptoes with, because you're worried about them touching your heart and you're just yelling in pain. It's like the trap that we fall into is thinking that love will heal everything. And I'm a passionate supporter of love. I'm a, you know it's my focus. The challenge people people have, can challenge those the word I keep using, the opportunity people have is to choose to actually use love to heal themselves first before they get into a relationship. And why I keep promoting the self-love practice, which I will put in the comments because I just talked about it, how convenient was that, is that when you love yourself fully, you start healing that way too. So self-love is a healing agent, absolutely, but not as easily from somebody else is from yourself. Fill up your own tanks, fill up your own heart with love first, it starts to heal the wounds. Now, it does help to have coaching, counseling, interaction to undo those, um, the wounds that are still in there. But with self-love as well, it becomes much more fluid and much more able to heal. I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me as well, because those two things will help you get more healed. But the trap you will fall into if you just go ahead, 
self-love number one exactly yes Carrie self-love is number one and that's the thing is we don't most people don't bother with that in fact a lot of people think and this is one of those um, lies we tell ourselves that if we love ourselves we're going to be egotistical and that is nothing like the truth ego doesn't come from love ego comes from mental um, selfishness is the best way of putting it so the practice of self-love is actually lower than your head <laughs> so it's not the ego it's not the matter it's not the um, egotistical nature it's the self-love nature it's very different but when you love yourself first it helps you heal it helps you become whole and if you get someone to coach you <clears throat> like myself you can become wholer faster and become able to attract a new relationships and then it'll be safer to date but you've got to be willing to take the steps so to summarize this briefly to bring this to a um, completion if you don't take care of your emotional and your mental baggage it will continue to drag on you and make you sick whether it's physical or emotional it will make you sick and that's the challenge we face is we wonder why we have these challenges in life sometimes where we don't feel up to up to snuff we may be physically okay but we feel worn out thank you Della self-love yes but many people mix that with being selfish exactly yes thank you for writing what I said <laughs> yes that is a challenge many people do mix that we're selfish because they don't realize that self-love is about healing their heart and focusing on the heart because people think being self self self-love is something about stroking their own ego and it isn't about that stroking your own ego enough people do that bad enough as it is we don't need to go into that conversation I don't support that myself we need our egos to survive that's the part we need but to 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 make it so um, self-centric is the in the correct place if you can be self-hearted instead of self-centered that makes sense it'd be much more effective so to summarize again if you're getting at a painful experience relationship particularly is the, is the main thread but it could be out of a family dynamic or a business arrangement something like that where you feel wounded to move to the next one without doing the work to heal that past wound is a risky proposition I don't recommend it at all so what to do instead one is to practice self-love because self-love is a healing agent as I mentioned secondly is to get support get guidance get coaching from someone who can help you with this area who brings that love as well to help you really um, heal fast as you can move forward in the way you want in your life again I put links in the comments for the self-love and for the discovery session I'm passionate about this as you may have guessed that's why I do these talks every day it's my number 611 today um, I think you got my point I don't need to hammer it home anymore you you're on the track you've you've understood what I said I kept this ideally clean and clear a um, couple of things first of all I'll give you the replay links for this Facebook live and YouTube and podcast before I do just a quick reminder because tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday I am going to be going to some friends to hang out with them watch the game so 5 p.m. won't work for my Facebook live tomorrow so if you're watching me live normally at 5 p.m. Pacific time which is my normal time and do invite you to join me on my personal page to watch me live on 5, 5 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow is going to probably be my probably be around 7 or 8 I'll post it on my Facebook page when I'll go live but it'll be after the game <laughs> just because I want to sit and enjoy the game and I go oh crap I've got to leave now to do the Facebook live I can play it's a Sunday I'm gonna go play so replays for my my broadcasts and again if you have questions please put in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off with you watching on YouTube or on Facebook live um, I go live on my personal page which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby that's where I go live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time except tomorrow I also save them to my business page on Facebook which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author you can also who am I rooting for during the game well since I'm living I mean I'm from England so it doesn't really matter that much but I do live in LA that kind of puts my choice on the table and since it's the first time that um, anyway I'm not gonna get in that <laughs> maybe and I hope you're well you support if you want because I know you you may be from another part of the country in your heart and your views but Rams let's say it like that anyway replays <laughs> damn sit out loud people are gonna say stuff um, replays on YouTube you've got my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby there's a playlist on there called messages from the masculine you can subscribe to my YouTube channel get my playlist there yes go Rams um, and then again on you on my iTunes I have a podcast on iTunes called messages for the masculine you can subscribe to that and you can download the audio versions of these tracks I've only got about 40 of them up there so far there's 611 of these I've got some catching up to do so with that being said 
I wish you a wonderful weekend. I know it's been a bit, if you're in LA, it's definitely been a bit wet today. You just had some sunshine and a bit of a rainbow and then it went cloudy again. So I think Carrie's reading for the Rams as well from what he posted, uh, Della. <laughs> and Della, we'll see you at Agape tomorrow, maybe. We're back at the Savant, so maybe I'll see you tomorrow at Agape. Um, anyway, I'm going to sign off. So, the, ooh, ooh, feisty. <laughs> the team you're not. Cute. Um, so I, <laughs> with that, I'm going to leave you to play amongst yourselves. I'll back in tomorrow at probably 7 p.m. I think is when the game's over by then and the, and the re, um, post-game conversations are done. But I'll definitely be on again tomorrow later on. So please join me then. Um, if you have questions or thoughts about this topic, please put them below and I will, I will put links in the comments for both the self-love and for this conversation with me. So, um, yes, okay, you two, you have fun. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves and uh, make sure you're healed. That's the best advice I can give you. With that, I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.